Welcome to Power PMAC Motor Setup Tutorial video. This tutorial will guide you through all the necessary steps to set up a motor using Power PMAC ID. We will configure linear and rotary brushless motors with different encoders using direct PWM amplifier. Before starting a new project, always execute reset and reinitialize commands to set PMAC settings to factory default. And issue a save command to save the settings. The first thing we are going to do is to set the clock frequency. Always set the clocks after starting a new project. Go to the project in the solution explorer. Under CPU, click on system. Specify the phase frequency, servo frequency, and channel frequency according to the required performance. Click accept to save the clock settings. Let's start with the motor setup. To set up a new motor, go to the solution explorer, right click on motors, select add a motor, enter the motor number and select the feedback type depending on your hardware. Here we will set up motor 4 with single feedback. The next step is the amplifier selection. All the Delta Tau amplifiers are available in the IDE database. If you are using a Delta Tau amplifier, simply select it from the list of the amplifiers. However, if you are using third party amplifiers, you will need to add a new amplifier and fill out the information. We are using a Delta Tau amplifier, PowerBrick LV. So the only thing we need to specify is the input voltage which is 48 volts for my system. Click save to accept the settings. If all the information is correct, the block will turn green with a check mark. The next step is a motor selection. Similar to amplifier selection page, a motor can either be selected or added to the ID database. To add a new motor, select open motor details, click add new, and fill out the information from the data sheet. In this example, we are using a linear brushless DC motor. So specify the motor type as brushless and geometry as linear. Enter the electrical specifications. Specify the correct electrical cycle length as it is very important in motor phasing. In power rating section, specify motor ratings Click save for the database entry. Select the motor. Click save to save the selection. Next step is encoder configuration. If the encoder is not listed in the database, open encoder details. Select add new encoder. Enter the manufacturer and part number. Select signal type as analog sinusoidal and geometry as linear. Enter the resolution and max speed of encoder from datasheet. ID will calculate the effective resolution. Select save to add encoder to database and click select primary encoder. Next, we need to define the phasing method for the brushless motor. Refer PMAC user manual to determine correct phasing method for your application. Here we will select the stepper method. Define the user units to scale encoder counts to engineering units. I would like my units to be in millimeters. Select millimeters from drop down list and set 10,000 counts as 1 mm. Make sure the resolution is correct before moving to the next step. Click save to accept the settings. Next, click on the hardware interface block. The hardware interface page is where you assign the access to the output channel of the amplifier and feedback channel from the encoder. ID will assign the amplifier and encoder channels by default. We recommend indexing the channels of the access interface card in a manner that corresponds with the motor number. We are using motor 4, so amplifier and feedback interface should be on fourth channel or third index. The hardware over travel limits should be disabled if your machine doesn't have this hardware. Verify the channel setting is correct according to the wiring. Select accept to save and click on the interactive feedback. 
the interactive feedback screen displays real time plot of feedback device. The purpose of this screen is to help determine whether the encoder feedback is working properly. Move the encoder by hand and observe the feedback on the screen. The plot shows the encoder position and the position at the top of the screen should change to indicate actual position. If you see the feedback, your encoder is working properly. However, if you do not see any feedback, you should look at the previous settings to make sure everything is set up correctly. Select Accept and click on Operating Limits. On this page, the correct values are already calculated by ID if you properly filled out motor and amplifier data. The following error limits can be changed according to the system limits. For safety, verify I2T protection limits and make sure they align with the power ratings of the motor and amplifier. If everything looks good, click Accept to configure the settings. At this point, all the motor parameters are configured. The test and set block performs a series of tests to evaluate motor parameters. In auto mode, predefined tests are performed to configure the motor. In manual mode, user can specify values of parameters for each test and execute them in sequence. Simply select start in the auto mode. The software will run this test in sequence. Once complete, a message will prompt asking you to save this configuration. If the test fails, that means one of the parameters in the setup is incorrect and should be addressed by looking at power PMAC message window. Select accept and click on basic tuning. Finally, everything is set up and motor can be tuned using ID auto tune feature. This is the basic auto tune screen, which permits a very simple interface for obtaining reasonable servo gains to jog a motor. Click on Start Tuning. Select Yes to perform basic tuning. After the tuning is complete, you will see a plot of the step response and tuning complete message will pop up. Select OK and click Accept to synchronize ID project files with PMAC. If additional tuning is desired, we can always use Advanced Tuning tool to fine tune the servo gains. Now, click Commissioning. The commissioning block is a collection of motor elements to set motion limits depending on your application for safe and efficient operation. Make sure you specify reasonable motion limits before trying to move your axis. Select topology button to go to the main screen. Now we have successfully set up a linear motor. Test the motor to verify it is configured properly. We will use the jog buttons to jog the axis. So far, we have seen how to configure a linear motor in IDE. Now we will cover another example, this time a rotary motor with quadrature encoder. Now, add a motor from Solution Explorer. Select motor number and feedback type. We will follow the same steps as before. Select the amplifier from the list and click save. Now, go to the motor details to add a rotary motor. Fill out the information from spec sheet. Save to add the motor to database and select the motor. Next, go to encoder details to add quadrature encoder. Select signal type as digital quadrature and geometry as rotary. Enter encoder lines per revolution for resolution. Select phasing method, scale the units,
click save to accept the settings and move on to hardware interface page. Verify amplifier and encoder channels are indexed properly. Click accept. Go to interactive feedback. Verify the encoder feedback. Select accept. Next, go to the operating limits. Confirm the system limits are within specs and select accept. Now, click test and set. Click start to configure motor parameters. After completion, click accept and go to the basic tuning. Start basic tuning. Once the tuning is complete, accept the gains and move on to commissioning page. Verify the motion limits and go to the main screen for testing the motor. Click the jog buttons to ensure the motor is set up properly. The steps involved in motor setup are identical for all motors and encoder types supported by IDE. Only few options will change with respect to the selected motor and encoder. I hope this tutorial will be enough to get your axis moving and head you in the right direction. If you are stuck at any technical details, please don't hesitate to contact Omron Tech Support. Thank you.